Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Oasis Focus and Finance Show. This is your special Ramadan edition and I'm your host Shafiq Morton. Last week in our special series in which we focus upon women and their role in the working place and how they can ensure a financial future and how they can contribute and also how they interact in the financial sphere. We started off that last week. But of course we had a very beautiful talk by Sheikh Mohammed Marat from the Zinatul Islam Mosque in District 6 Cape Town in which he focused on the beautiful lives of Sayyida Khadija Rajulahu Anha and Sayyida Aisha Rajulahu Anha. This week we shift focus to women in the workplace and we chat to some of the women from Oasis, uh, Fatima, Jawaria, Sheherazan and Wiyam about their experiences in the working place as women and their outlook on investment and finance. Of course, if you are a single mother, if you are dependent upon your spouse, if you are a household executive, this is also for you. Earlier on, we spoke to the women and this is what they had to say. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تتمنوا ما فضل الله به بعضكم على بعض للرجال نصيب مما اكتسبوا وللنساء نصيب مما اكتسبن واسألوا الله من فضله and do not wish for that by which Allah has made some of you exceed others. For men is a share of what they have earned, and for women is a share of what they have earned. And ask Allah of his bounty. Indeed, Allah is ever of all things knowing. وَلِكُلٍ جَعَلْنَا مَوَالِيَ مِمَّا تَرَكَ الْوَالِدَانِ وَالْأَقْرَبُونَ وَالَّذِينَ عَقَدَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ فَآتُوهُمْ نَصِيبَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدًا And for all we have made is to what is left by parents and relatives and to those whom your oaths have bound to you Give them their share. Indeed, Allah is ever, over all things, a witness. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a special Oasis Ramadan series. Joining me, I have a few inspirational women and we will be talking about women and finance. I have with Am Haldanes, Fatima Wise, as well as Juwadiya Malik. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Um, following from our previous program, Sheikh Murad had beautifully highlighted the lives of Sayyidatina Aisha and Sayyidatina Khadija and the roles that they played in the community. With Sayyidatina Khadija, she was a very industrious, very um, uh, educational person who, with the death of her father, was put in a position where she had to run the affairs, the business affairs, as well as the affairs um, at home, the financial affairs. And similarly with uh, Sayyidatina Aisha, also a very, um, a, a, very knowledgeable lady who had to be a teacher and showed that women can actually be advisors um, like she advised our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam. So whether you are a working woman or if you are a woman that is at home, heaven forbid anything happens to our husbands or our fathers, um, we are going to be left in a position where you actually have to handle financial affairs. That is correct and she designed financial independence really isn't just about how much money you have but it's about having that confidence and having um, you know just being able to stand up for yourself and confidence to make decisions mm -hmm. so really whether you're male or female um, whether you're single or married you need to be in control of your financial lives now in today's society we really have two types of households we have single income households and we have with is joint income. Now, let me focus on single income households of today. Now, this could comprise of, for example, um, single parents, or where you have one spouse that is working and the other a stay at home. And generally, it would be the father working and the mother being the stay at home mom because she will have 
um, responsibilities of looking after the children. Now, in that example, you will find that um, in today's society, the man will work. Mm -hmm. He will pass on whether the weekly wage or monthly salary, but he'll pass that on to the wife and she'll run the household. Now, in generations before, it might not have been the same picture. Men who earned, they would run the finances. So it left women in that time in a position where they didn't know what finance mm -hmm. was. They didn't know what it was to make a financial decision. Um, and generally, they left all of that to my husband. So asking an older lady in today's community, um, you know, auntie, uh, what are you saving towards? They, they, they would know the answer, but they lack the confidence of actually giving the answer because that was a man's role in the household. So really today, we're seeing that that has changed. The shift has, it, it has moved. But I think um, that that stigma that you came out of a household where yes, my father did everything um, and he made all the decisions. Women really just need to stand up for themselves and, well, and start yeah. making that financial decision. So, uh, so just zoning in on that example, it's then therefore very important for women to um, do things in consultation with the husband because in the event something does happen, that women would then know to how, how to budget, how to plan, what goals did we set, what did we want to achieve, did we have a safety net, um, mm -hmm. because sometimes things doesn't go according to plan and you have to be able to think about those things and with, with women we're very different mm -hmm. to men, that's how we've been created and there are sometimes things that happen in our lives that um, is different to males like um, it could be a different income, uh, you could be going on maternity leave and also our life expectancy. They say women are living a lot longer now. Um, so those types of things, it needs to come in to when you want to become more financially savvy and you want to plan and you want to be able to ensure that you've prepared for those um, rainy days. And uh, just on that, the ease women, um, single parents for example, um, they've been doing it for ages. I'm not saying that women of past generations didn't know how to be financially savvy because we did have single um, single parent households that were able to run and see the children through university, etc. So um, it's really the majority of women that would need to step up and, and, and find that confidence. But there are women um, um, that have been doing it for, for, for years, really. Yes, we are. It's, it's important to have a budget because one needs to understand what is coming in the household, what's going out of the household, and to determine what your wants are versus what you actually need. So do you really need those expensive things in life or could you settle for a second-hand car? It's not only important to be financially savvy in case your husband's or your father's pass away, it's very important to be financially savvy, mm -hmm. to be independent. Mm -hmm. Despite that, you know, as Sheikh Murat has mentioned in our previous segment, that Sayyidatina Khadija Radulahu Anha was a businesswoman and independent mm -hmm. and earned her own money even prior to having met Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also just recently, the increase, mm -hmm. the vast exactly. increase, um, it's not only important for women to be independent and financially savvy, it's necessary mm -hmm. despite that. Yes. Exactly. And because they need to also supplement and help their husbands in the monthly income. Yeah, like the households where both husband and wife are working, um, the responsibility of the decisions for um, household finances are shared, mm -hmm. um, are also shared. Absolutely. And um, they sit together and they um, put, form the budget and calculate the monthly expenses. Even if she is a home executive, she, she can still play an active role mm -hmm. in the decision making of the household finances. Absolutely. And if you think of it, women of past, that's what they did. I mean, they mm. say women mm. are the best savers. Mm. The only thing is that women prioritize the needs of the household yeah. over the own. So you'll find that women won't be saving in an investment mm. or mm. whether it be retirement savings or unit trust investments, you don't find them saving that. They save because they know that, you know, it's the middle of the month. We don't mm. know what's still going to come. Mm -hmm. And like Fatima said, um, there's every increase, increasing in inflation mm -hmm. that has gone up, so you automatically pump all of that 
into household experiences. Mm, exactly. Right. And even though they might not have the theory behind it, but they have the practical, practical experience yes, and knowledge. Yes. So that's very important because um, I'm sure that the men and women who are tuned in today uh, actually need to think about how do you increase financial literacy at home. So when we come back from our break, we'll be speaking about how do you actually start increasing that financial literacy at home. And you are watching the Oasis Focus and Finance Show, our special Ramadan edition in which we look at women in finance. After the break, we'll rejoin Sheherazan, Fatima, Jawaria and Wian. We'll be back just after this. And welcome back. You're watching the special edition of the Focus and Finance Show this Ramadan. We go back to our ladies at Oasis where they discuss their lives uh, in the world of finance and investment. <laughs> وَالَّذِي تَخَافُونَ نُشُوزَهُنَّ فَعِذُوهُنَّ وَاهْجُرُوهُنَّ فِي الْمَضَاجِعِ وَاضْرِبُوهُنَّ فَإِنْ أَطَعْنَكُمْ فَلَا تَبْغُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ سَبِيلًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيًّا كَبِيرًا Men are in charge of women by right of what Allah has given one over the other and what they spend for maintenance from their wealth. So righteous women are devoutly obedient, guarding in the husband's absence what Allah would have them guard. Before the break, we were discussing um, increasing financial literacy at home and the role that women can play to increase this literacy. Um, that is true, and women being the, the, the teachers of a family. I mean, really, for any kid, your first teacher is your mother. Um, and, and I believe that knowledge is the key to all ventures. And with that, reading is really important when it comes to financial literacy. And we find that our daily newspaper, even our week in August, would have segments that are specifically written and designed for current financial issues and trends that analysts are seeing within the uh, financial and investment industry. And I think if we start reading that, um, formulating a discussion about it around the eating table at home, mm -hmm. um, we can gauge other people's opinions mm -hmm. from that topic, um, which would make us even rethink what we initially thought of. Mm -hmm. and, and in that way, these kind of topics and discussions would not be something that is first taught to our kids when mm -hmm. they go to school or mm -hmm. university. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it becomes second nature to kind of challenge something yeah. um, and, and be part of a discussion. And you know, there are accredited financial advisors out there for anybody that's starting reading yes. up on financial literacy. If, you, if you're not too sure about what you've read, mm -hmm. um, or you don't want to you know, make a wrong decision, you could always contact an accredited financial advisor yes. who would be able to really walk you through whatever situation you find mm -hmm. yourself in financially currently. And to create the, the understanding. Correct. I mean, one yes. of the misconceptions is that financial literacy is all about money, and mm -hmm. it isn't. It's mm -hmm. about instilling a good value system, being grateful, being thankful, doing things in moderation, making ethical decisions. Yeah. So in essence, it ultimately starts at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are encouraged to seek knowledge and to be educated. By empowering women and encouraging, and encouraging them to be more financially independent will then benefit the household as, as a mm -hmm. unit and not just the woman herself. Yeah. Yeah. So women should take the initiative to actually get involved in finances and take their God-given right mm. to be involved in finances in the household. Mm -hmm. Where, like Sheikh Murat, Sheikh Mohammed Murat said, the men are responsible for caretaking and also providing um, um, the finances um, to the family and taking care of the family. Whereas the earnings of the wife is um, to be used to her discretion. But as most women do, we then share and we use it for the household as well and we, and we contribute in that effect. But 
in doing so, it should be seen for the sadaqa that it is. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm getting a lot of points coming across, like empowerment, mm -hmm. um, being independent. But how would you, uh, a woman or even an elderly or even younger woman that, that is listening, how would they gain in this knowledge and this experience? Mm -hmm. No, Sheila, I'm on. I think that it's not only good to be financially savvy and to read about finances, but mm -hmm. people generally learn by doing. And in saying that, yeah. I think that it's important to teach our children from a very young age mm -hmm. entrepreneurial skills. Excellent, yes. Because it teaches them um, the value of work and what you put in yeah. and what you can get out of it, the result of putting in. And it will also teach them an appreciation for money, work ethic, mm -hmm. and people skills yeah. and goal setting. Yeah, on that goal setting, um, I know she designed before the show, you gave me a story about your childhood, what your mom used to do. Yes, um, uh, when we uh, went to school, we had to participate in these cake sales mm -hmm. and we'd be very excited when we'd come home and then my, um, to, to actually spend the money and then my mom would say, <laughs> hold it, just remember you need to put aside the money for the ingredients for next month Absolutely. and then you know try to make a profit the following month and just those small little things you know you grow up thinking okay i need to make provision for the next month i need yeah. to think about those things and, and can you see it, it's your mother that taught you that yeah yes. so it, it again brings about the importance of women and teaching exactly i mean small little concepts like that the concept of you've made a profit but you also want to do that by excel next week yeah. yeah so you need to keep a bit of that and then you can teach them about savings and and budgeting because look as any kid when you're making money, you have your eye on a Barbie doll or yeah. a PlayStation game or whatever it is. Mm. But you know that you have this money now. Do I spend it all on mm. that one thing? Mm. Or do I save up month by month okay. so that I can get it? And exactly. that's goal yeah. setting. And essentially goal setting over a period. You mm. can say, you know, well, that PlayStation game is 800 Jan. Let me put 200 Jan away every, every month for the next four months. Yeah. Mm and then eventually I'll be able to buy my, my game. So mm. in that way, you set a goal, you set a timeline, and then you achieve that goal. Exactly. And the same thing goes with saving on a bigger scale. It's not any different. It's the same concepts. Mm. It's a concept of having a goal and setting a timeline. And that's learning in practice. Exactly. Mm. And that reinforcement really encourages a progressive learning and also action. Yes. Well, ladies, I've certainly been inspired today. <laughs> And um, I'm really looking forward to our next program because, you know, like we mentioned earlier, sometimes things doesn't go according to plan. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you were hoping to build a house and you, it didn't fall through. Or you were hoping to save for certain things and it couldn't happen mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Um, there are obstacles because that's the reality. Yeah. And I think it would be great to touch on in the next program how we overcame those obstacles mm -hmm. and what decisions were taken and what is available to our viewers. So shukran ladies for joining me. Until the next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And that concludes today's edition of your special Ramadan Focus and Finance show, having a look at women in the world of finance and investment. Special thanks to Sheha Razan, Jawaria, Wiyam and Fatima for their contribution. Should you wish to watch this or any of our other shows, you can log into the Oasis Crescent YouTube channel. Should you have any questions, you can email info at oasiscrescent.com or call 0860 100 786. Until next time, I'm your host Shafiq Morton. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.